Hello! Today I'm going to build this kit um, which has lots of red LEDs in a matrix and I think the way this works is that you've got a 4017 driving rows, another one driving columns and you can sort of tweak the speeds of the two I suppose they're sequences, the, the two sequences, um, and then if you get the speeds to closely match, you probably get f static patterns that kind of slowly fade. Anyway, that's <laughs> just my expectation of what's going to happen, but we'll see um, when we get uh, so far through the build process. So let's get this thing open, see what's inside. Okie dokie. Bag of LEDs, I presume. Oh, also some other bits, transistors, capacitors, the two potentiometers for varying the speeds. Now I'm guessing that the, um, apart from the 4017s, oh, lots of resistors here, there's also 555s, which are the main clocks, which are going to um, clock the 4017s. We'll take a look. Uh, this is quite good look in this bag, because there are two 4017s, they've actually interleaved them so to minimize uh, bending of the legs and I think they've done the same with the 555s yes there they are um, and then all the other components in here now this is powered by 5 volt USB so we'll need to fit um, the USB well it's a barrel jack um, on the other end so the barrel jack socket um, we'll need to get the 555s in. Now interestingly there's no schematic uh, supplied with this so we're just going to have to... <laughs> I mean the schematic's pretty simple, it's 555 driving 4017, another one up there, one doing rows, one doing columns. Um, there must be... oh yes there are, there are lots of transistors here for row drivers split between the two sides, lots of column drive transistors. Um, now the resistors, there are these which are 2 to brown, so 220 ohms, lots of 10Ks, really just a general value, and then this uh, orange orange red 3K3 um, which is here and it's resistor 1. So let's get some resistors in um, which uh, are the low profile components Let's start by doing that. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about neatness with this because um, I just want to get it done quickly. So 3K3 resistor goes in there. Shove it in, solder it and then get some of these 220 ohm and 10K. Are they 10K? Brown, black, orange. Yeah, 10K resistors in. Okay, soldering iron, um, 300, perhaps I'll go 340. I've got three temperatures programmed in, 380, which is a bit high, 300 and 340. 300 might be okay, actually. Let's start with 300 and see how we go. Uh, okay, a bit of solder on here. And uh, I've pressed something. Yes, I've pressed a button. I've pressed a button, and it says work temp 400. That's a bit high. Now there are about 10-ish uh, 220 ohm resistors, and they're all down the sides here. So they're for the row drivers. There are no 220 ohms for the column drivers. So these 220 ohms presumably are the main current limiting, and it's implemented in the rows, not the columns. There are lots of 10k resistors down the side here, but there are none for the um, column drives. So what's the reasoning behind that? Um, I don't know whether these transistors are different. Ah, actually the transistors are just marked Q14, Q15. So they must all be the same, presumably all NPNs. Interesting. Okay, well let's get these 220 ohm resistors in anyway. Right, some of the 220 ohms uh, down that side, flip it over stick it down on here and let's get soldering. Yeah, I think 300 degrees Celsius is uh, adequate for this. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, that's soldering in fine. These through plated holes are pretty good at just sucking the solder 
into them by capillary effect, I presume it is. Uh, right, that's three of those. Okay, so that's five resistors in. Um, there are nine of these uh, 220 ohm resistors and the array is nine by nine by the look of it. Three, six, nine, yeah. So these um, 4017s, maybe they've been tweaked to do a nine, a one of nine cycle, or maybe they do a one of 10 cycle and just ignore the 10th output. I don't know, but yeah. I, I presume because of space limitations, they've restricted this to nine by nine. It is a rather strange, you'd expect 10 by 10. And these transistors are all the same. They are S9014, uh, and they're a general purpose NPN transistor. So I don't have to worry about half of them being PNP and the other half being NPN. Now there are three switches on here, little, um, click in, click out switches. One is marked power. The other two is uh, YF and XF, so Y frequency, X frequency. Now what I'm assuming, uh, if I can find my pointer, um, is that we've got a 224 capacitor here. Uh, so it's 220 nanofarads and there's a one mic. Now there's only a five to one ratio there, but I, I assume this is a changeover switch and in one position it selects the one mic, in the other position the uh, ceramic capacitor. And so basically it's a, a speed um, selector here, and then there's a fine adjustment on these two potentiometers. That's what I'm assuming that is. I don't know whether this switch has to be in any particular way round. There is a, a sort of index marker there, but the switch has nothing specific on it. There's that little cutout where the spring is inside. Um, perhaps I'll just put that in there. So possibly, actually, if I get them both the same way around, they should uh, work in the same manner. So these 10K resistors, I presume, are base current limiters for the transistors, but there aren't any on these. Now, s sort of my natural way of thinking would have been NPNs, uh, Pull, pulling down on one uh, dimension and the others would be PMPs, but maybe they've got these MPNs in emitter follower mode or something like that. And for that reason, there's no need for a base current limiting resistor. I don't know, because I don't have a schematic. And this is one of these black PCBs where it's very difficult to follow the traces, but I presume I will have to do that at some point. Otherwise we're not really going to understand how this thing <laughs> works. So I've got all the 10K resistors, uh, which I assume are base uh, driver transist uh, resistors to limit the base current in, and there are two 10Ks uh, left over. Now each one of those is next to a 555, one there and one here. So I'm assuming that's the basic timing resistor for the 555, uh, possibly in series with the pot. I don't know what value these pots are. Oh, they're 100K. So yeah, maybe that's an offset to stop the pot uh, going to zero ohms. So perhaps that's just in series with the pot. We can check that in a minute. Um, so let's get the 10Ks in there and then maybe get the 555s put in. Well, nothing's gonna happen if it doesn't have these uh, 555 timer chips in it. I assume they're 555 or are they 7555? I will need additional optics to see this. Uh, they are just standard bipolar 555s. Let's get these in. Uh, bipolar 555s are tough, don't have to worry about anti-static. I keep pressing this back button. That's really not in a good place, is it? So let's just solder those in, don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, the 4017s, I mean these days they are, they've been toughened by the addition of uh, diodes on the input so they're not quite so static sensitive as they used to be in the early days of CMOS. Um, so I can probably just shove them in without worrying too much. Oh dear, I'm running out of solder. I'll need to get some more. Right, let's do the 4017s. Uh, they are 4017s, aren't they? 
Yeah, CD4017. Let's have a macro shot of that. The 555 first. Uh, oh, can we get the light at a certain angle? There it is. Any 555P. And this one is CD4017BE. Uh, let's just film the final row of the 4017s. Just sticking that in. And, uh, oh, is that 16 pins? Yeah, I do believe it is 16 pins. I've just noticed there's another switch here marked XY switch. So we've got X frequency, Y frequency, uh, you know, selecting between two capacitors. But what's this XY switch? <laughs> no idea what that's doing. Right, let's go for the timing capacitors. We've got these two 224s. Two, two um, there's this odd. 104 or 100 nanofarad that might be power supply and there's a big 220 microfarad uh, electrolytic two one microfarad electrolytics which i think are timing that go with these two 224s so let's get the timing capacitors in uh, so down the bottom here we've got a two pin header that says battery 5 volt to 9 volt um, or i can just use usb which is this barrel jack here that also says five volts to nine volts. Uh, let's get the four switches in, or maybe I'll put the transistors in next. I'll just bulk uh, feed those all in. They're all the same, it would appear. Well now, there's not a lot else to go in here. Uh, the four switches, which are here, the two potentiometers, which are here, uh, the power socket there, and then it's just LEDs, and I can just put a couple in and just see if um, they light up and whether the speed changes with these pots. So I'll just get all this lot in and yeah, we can give it a test. Okay, all of that lot is in. Now I'll just put in a couple of random uh, red LEDs, get these the right way around. Positive, I assume, is the long leg. Um, interesting. They've got a strange shape marking for the LEDs. Doesn't bear any resemblance to where the flat is. The flat would be that flat on the sort of uh, curved end. Yeah, it's not very clear. So a couple of LEDs is probably a good thing to do because uh, I don't want to solder this lot in and then find that uh, I've misinterpreted um, the way they've uh, marked polarity on these. Let's get those in. Right, let's power it up um, using the supplied USB cable and see what happens. Uh, power. Oh, yeah, we've got some pulses. Yeah, it's pulsing, it's flashing. So I think it's doing what it's meant to. Oh, it seems to have stopped. Why is that? Oh, I think that's because the power bank turned off. Actually, if I press and hold the button then it'll go into its low power mode where it stays on let's see what happens there and hopefully these LEDs will just continue to flash so I think that's doing what it's meant to do um, I will complete this um, in another video probably um, and then we can see what the full effect of having all the LEDs on here uh, actually, do these speed buttons work? Oh yeah, that's quicker now. So the speed buttons are doing something. What about the XY button? I don't know what's happening there. 